Hey guys, it's Kari from the Alfred Homestead, and today I wanted to share with you my DIY aerated compost tea. So there are two kinds of compost tea. There's one where you just throw everything together in your five gallon bucket and you let it sit for a day or two and you leave it like that. And the other is aerated, which is what we're gonna make today. So what you're gonna need is a five gallon bucket. This is just one of the gardening buckets I have standing around. It's just got some dirt in it. I'm not even gonna worry about cleaning that out. It's totally fine. And then the next thing that you're going to need is a mesh bag. I have this, again, specifically for the garden. It's just a reusable nylon bag. And inside, I have put two cups of our homemade compost. This isn't even completely finished compost, but it'll be good enough for this project. Um, if you have compost, go ahead and try and use your own self-made compost. It's going to be richer in those organic living microbes and that's really what you want so we're going to keep it in the bag it's going to be kind of like a like a tea bag really it's going to infuse our water with all of those good microbes and the food for those microbes and i'm going to go ahead and just tie that bag off so it doesn't make a hot mess and everything's spilling out now if you don't have this you can always just strain out the bits later after it has sat all right, and then you're gonna need some blackstrap molasses. You want to make sure that you are using unsulfured blackstrap molasses. This is amazing. This stuff is super cheap. It's the best price you'll find anywhere. I guarantee it. I will make sure to link this um, product down in the description box so that you can go and buy it. It's about $20 for an entire gallon. And the next thing that we have is some fish fertilizer. This stuff is also a miracle worker in the garden for sure. If you guys have never used this stuff, I highly recommend you try it out. It's especially good for when plants are really young and just freshly germinated. This stuff is so rich and it's, it's just immediate. The results are immediate. The plants love and thrive on this stuff. So the next thing that you will need is an aerator. This is from our old little aquarium that my husband had long ago, and we pretty much only use it for this compost tea now. This is going to help ensure that this oxygenates our entire mixture over the course of about 24 hours that it's gonna be sitting there. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to take about a tablespoon of this blackstrap molasses. Now this stuff is going to add a lot of minerals. This has, in addition to minerals, it has some carbs in there as well. So blackstrap molasses is the nutritious leftover part of making sugar. So they extract all of the nutritious parts of the sugar out and that is what's left over. This stuff's really great on its own in the garden so feel free to just dilute blackstrap molasses with some water and use that in the garden. So I'm also going to put about a tablespoon of that fish emulsion in there. That stuff is powerful. You really only need a tablespoon. One gallon of that stuff will last you forever. And we're going to go ahead and put the compost bag in there, or you can do it after you put the water in, whatever is easier for you. I'm just going to make sure that I swirl that bucket around a few times to make sure I dilute and distribute the, um, the liquids that I put in there since they're really quite thick. So I wanted to explain really quick the difference here between a regular compost tea and an aerated compost tea. So with the regular compost tea, I would just let this sit for a day or two, right? And it would kind of, it, it's not really like a tea, it's more like a ferment. And you're slowly letting those microbes build up over the course of a day or two through those nutrients that they're, they're feeding off of. Well, with an aerated compost tea, we are adding oxygen. We are increasing the amount of microbes because microbes need oxygen and by adding more oxygen that it, than it would otherwise get 
we are going to get more of those good microbes rather than that anaerobic um, state that we don't really want. So if you don't have an aerator or something like that to use, you can totally just go ahead and mix this vigorously. You want to introduce oxygen. You want to agitate this so that you're introducing oxygen in here. And you want to continue to do this every hour or so for, I don't know, a course of a day or so. So you don't have to use an aerator, but it would certainly help. And they're not that expensive. so. If you find that you're going to be doing this often, it's easier <laughs> to go ahead and buy one of these online. They're very simple to use. I just hook in these tubes to the machine and I plug the machine in. So I've got two tubes here going. You don't even need to. You could just do one. And I've put the bucket on our southern facing wall. It's going to be up into the mid 70s today. I'm doing this first thing in the morning so that it can sit on that warm wall and the heat will also help to get those microbes going. Um, you can also put this inside if it's a little bit too cold outside. It really shouldn't smell because it's not going to be anaerobic. Like if you were just letting this sit without aerating, it would start smelling, right? Because it's, it's forming in an anaerobic environment. But now we're making this an aerobic environment. So you can see I'm getting this settled there. And I'm just going to let this sit for about 24 hours at which point we can then dilute it and use it right in the garden. Okay, so it's the next day. It has been over 24 hours now that it has been sitting. I ended up bringing this in last night because it was going to get under 50 degrees. So it just sat there bubbling away for the night. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave this to sit for another 24 hours so that it'll have a full 48 hours. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a quart size amount here to use today on the garden. So generally you can use like a one to four or even up to a one to 10 ratio of the liquid to water. I'm just going to go ahead and estimate like a 1 to 10 ratio. So I've got one quart and this is about like a two, two and a half gallon bucket here that I'm going to go ahead and fill up. And I forgot to mention too, as usual with anything you use in the garden, you really want to try and make sure that you use unchlorinated water. So if you're, if you're on city water, try and use rain water if you can. We are on a well, so that's never really a concern for me. I just go ahead and use our well water because I know it's not chlorinated. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop some on to some of the perennials that we planted earlier this year. Um, it's hard to see here from this angle, but those are some blueberries that we planted earlier this year, as well as an elderberry that we propagated earlier as well. Now you can go ahead and leave this to sit even longer than 48 hours if you were so inclined. I will say, even though we had this bucket inside, it did not smell at all. You know, if you had just a regular compost tea that was not aerated, it would definitely start to smell, especially with that fish fertilizer. But I am happy to say it did not stink up our house at all. Uh, this is another blueberry that we've got, it's a container variety. And we've got some asparagus over there that we need to go ahead and transplant once he's done for the season. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video all about how we make our compost tea.